Hello YouTube and welcome to an all new Elder Scrolls lore video. As you may have noticed, I recently had some pretty well performing videos and a significant influx of new subscribers. So welcome new guys and gals. And now let's see which one of you is truly tough enough to be a fan of this channel and watch my regular, interesting, but not to a lot of people, content. So today let's talk about the trees of Tamriel and their lore. So, trees. Most of us know what they are about. Big brown stems, leaves on the twigs that come from it. Usually I have to explain things on this channel, but I don't think I have to explain this one. That said, Tamriel has its own fair share of trees, and today I want to talk about them. I specifically want to talk about some Tamriel exclusive trees, because a lot of the trees that we see in real life, like oaks, birch trees, pine trees, and even sycamores, are actually also present on Tamriel. While a plant biologist would likely disagree, I don't think it's too interesting to talk about those kind of trees in an Elder Scrolls lore video, so I'll only be talking about the trees exclusive to Tamriel. Now, one of the first types of trees that I actually want to talk about are ironwood trees. While we do have trees in our universe that are nicknamed ironwood trees, it seems that these specific ones are Tamriel exclusive, so I'll talk about them in, as the first option before going to the real exclusives. These are trees which have existed in the lore since Daggerfall, but which have been a bit neglected by the games. Let me explain. Ironwood trees are extremely sturdy trees which produce wood almost as strong and unbreakable as iron. In the early Daggerfall slash Morrowind lore, Skyrim used to have quite a few groves of these trees uh, deep within its forests, but in game we do not see them anymore anywhere. With the exception being the Oblivion Creation Kit and one of Skyrim's creations from the Creation Club, which brings them into the game. Now, Creation Club content is highly dubious in its canonicity, but since it's all we have and I kind of like the explanation that they offer, I'll tell you what's in there. In that creation, they add the lore that these trees once used to be quite prevalent in Skyrim, but that they almost went extinct due to harvestation for both its wood, which is extremely strong, and its nuts and its fruit, which both hold quite useful alchemical properties for combat and medicine. Therefore, human greed made all of these ironwood trees disappear from Skyrim's landscape, except from the furthest reaches away from and the mortals where no humans come like the island where we go to during the creation club quest where you find some ironwood trees i'm sorry for the very bad screenshot i only have this creation on my nintendo switch because i couldn't be bothered to buy creation club content on any other platform that said, this type of tree has several different variants. You have regular ironwood, black ironwood, which is supposed to be stronger than regular ironwood. You have orange ironwood, which comes from a variant of the tree that's reportedly growing sparsely in elsewhere in Valenwood, as opposed to Skyrim. Now, Nectop is the first real exclusive, like there's no version of this in our own universe, which are the great grot oak trees of Valenwood, which may just be the biggest trees to exist on Tamriel. There are colossal trees dotting Valenwood in which the Bosmer grow their cities. You see, due to the green pack, the Bosmer cannot harm the trees of Valenwood in any way, so they can't harvest them for plants. Rather, the Bosmer use magic to shape the trees in ways which allows them to live in the trees, often shaping them like houses. The Grot Oaks, due to their massive size, have essentially become the base ground for the largest Bosmer cities. Some, like the large Elden tree of the Sea of Elden Root, are shaped to grow hollow so the entire inside of the tree can be used as one enormous Bosmer city. But there's also a lot that we don't know about these Grot Oaks, as there's quite some mystery to them. Some can move themselves, like the Grot Oak of the city of Falanesti. Because that city is based in a large moving tree, that city basically tracks around Valenwood as that tree walks or rather moves around the Valenwood forest. Although how exactly we don't really know. Other grot oaks have even been known to be able to talk and have intelligent conversations. Their branches hold, often hold massive co animal colonies next to the Bosmer who live in them, and some of them have such gigantic green canopies that it completely blots out the sky for a large area under it, causing some to call grot oak canopies a second sky or the middle green. 
Now, the next type of tree I want to talk about is the Witch Tree, which only appears in one game, the Elder Scrolls Travel Shadow Key, a very obscure Elder Scrolls game. I actually covered the main story of that game in one of my older videos, which is in the description if you want to see it, because despite uh, lacking narration, it's still one of my better videos. This tree, which is located in Western Hammerfell, is sentient and speaks to the player and gives quests to help the local population by conveying its meanings through the movements of its roots and the rustling of its leaves. Which, if you look at this image, uh, it strangely doesn't have any leaves, but it apparently still uses leaves to communicate, so just take that one. Now, the interesting thing is that we don't exactly know how this tree has become sentient. It could be a grot oak, which was maybe planted by the Bosmer a long time ago, uh, it could also be one of the Hist, which are the sentient trees which created the Argonians as their servants. Or it could be that this tree is possessed by some sort of spirit. Uh, I personally think it's the last case, as this tree looks absolutely nothing like one of the Hist trees, which I'll talk about briefly later in this video. But as you can see in the image, it looks absolutely nothing like a Hist tree. Now, the reason I think it's likely some sort of spirit which possesses the tree is that we have another case of a tree possessed by a spirit, which I think is worth discussing together with the witch tree so you can see the simula similarities. Namely, we have the Beldama Weird Tree in High Rock. This tree is basically a really large oak tree, which is either possessed by a spirit that people call the Weird Spirit, or the tree is the physical form of that spirit, which they call the Weird Spirit. Whichever is the case, this large tree, which is tended to by Beldama Weird Sisters, quote unquote, glows with an unnatural light and gives life to the land around it and supposedly has some form of control over other plants in the area. And it has elemental spirits bound to it, which the tree uses to communicate with the sisters which care for it in order to guide them. This very much sounds like a bigger and stronger version of the witch tree from Shadowkey, as that tree also cared about the area around the tree and cared for it by having the hero of the game help the popu local population in its quests. Uh, this is kind of unlike the Hist, which tend to be more apathetic, although not always, and generally only care for Argonians, although there are again some exceptions to that. But therefore I think it's more likely that it's a bit of a similar case to the weird tree. Something interesting by the way, uh, one of the sources for this video on the Weird Tree is actually an Imperial Missive on Glenumbra, which is like the region where the Weird Tree is in. Uh, basically that missive says that the people living close to the Weird Tree care so much about the forests around the Weird Tree that if the Imperials ever want to invade High Rock and occupy the place, they should just threaten the people with deforestation in order to bully the local population into submission. Um, yeah, fun stuff. Now, I personally think that the Elder Gleam Tree and the Gilder Green Tree that we see in Skyrim are in a similar situation, but they likely have far weaker spirits in them, as they are also said to be sentient in some ways. Now, the Elder Gleam is said to be the oldest tree in all of Skyrim, which was planted from a sapling that the early Needs brought from the continent of Admora during the Great Migration from humans to, to Tamriel from Admora. It's a tree which is so large and so strong that some have theorized that this was actually one of the ironwood trees, uh, because normal weapons actually can't harm it. Uh, but those theories are all from before the Creation Club, because the Creation Club gave us a look at some actual ironwood trees which looked far more like the ones that are present in the Oblivion Creation Kit. So I personally think that the Elder Gleam, along with its offspring, uh, Whiterun's Gilder Green Tree, are most likely also possessed by, the sp by spirits in some way, just like the Weird Tree and the Witch Tree or they are the physical form of certain spirits, although there are very little pieces of lore on those trees, so we really don't know what their story is. I just grouped them with those two, since their, their situations seem to be somewhat similar, uh, be it not completely comparable. So let me know your own theories on these trees if you have them. Now the next type of tree which I'll discuss is a bit less mysterious, but definitely not less interesting. It's the Briarheart tree. Now, we know Briarheart warriors from Skyrim and the Elder Scrolls Online. They are warriors that had their hearts torn out in a ritual and replaced with a Briarheart fruit, which can act as a replacement heart when placed by Hackraven magic. This fruit placed in their chests gives them an enhanced hearing and greater stamina and strength. While quite a lugubre and interesting ritual, which causes this whole heart transplant thing, the tree which produces the Briarheart fruit is almost equally as interesting, because in order to grow one of these Briarheart trees, one needs to plant a seed in a plot of soil inside a corpse which was purified by a Hackraven and is dumped into the ground. 
The planting of the seed into that body is apparently a secret but very elaborate ritual. Then the planted seed needs to be taken care for with spells and regular waterings with blood. And then the tree will start slowing grow, slowly growing from the body. Uh, first several sprouts will come out of the body and then connect together into a larger tree as the tree's roots. Very early in a tree's life, even as a sapling, it will carry briarheart fruits, which can be picked in order to transplant them into the bodies of willing warriors. Or maybe even unwilling ones, we don't really know too much about that ritual either, although we do know a little bit more than about the ritual uh, for the seed planting. But that's quite interesting, at least in my opinion. Now next we have two types of tree which appear in Skyrim, which we don't really know an awful lot about. Uh, we've got the sleeping tree, which is a weird white purplish tree growing on white runs plains. The sap of which has an intoxicating effect which is considered a drug. Now this tree supposedly either came from the floating island Umriel from the Elder Scrolls novels, which would make this sleeping tree one of the hist, or at least a sort of hist tree. Or another theory states that it came from the Red Mountain and a tiny part of the heart of Lorcan's power persists in the tree as it grew from a rock thrown out of the Red Mountain during its eruption in the Red Year. Uh, but we don't really know exactly which theory is right. Uh, I'm personally leaning more towards the Red Mountain theory as the tree looks nothing like a history which we see in the Elder Scrolls Online and in some concept art. But on the other hand, the histories of Umriel seem not to be the exact same ones as we have on Tamriel. So if you read the novels, you don't know, there's no real conclusion that we can base on this one. Uh, but it doesn't completely invalidate that theory because those hist were different. So again, let me know what your theory is. I might actually do a video on the Umriel crisis soon. Or I might not. Let me know if you want that. Anyway, the other three that we have from Skyrim, which we don't know an awful lot about, are the so-called canticle trees. These pink leaf trees are very rare and only grow in very specific places, which the Moth Priest Order calls Ancestor Glades. These trees attract Ancestor Moths, which are moths with strange mystical properties, which are used in ancient Moth Priest rituals, among which are primitive Elder Scrolls readings. We can actually find some of these moths in the Dawnguard questline in Skyrim where the moths help us read some of the Elder Scrolls. Now, three final mentions are the Fabricant trees, Nightwood trees and regular trees, which, well, they glow. First, Fabricant trees are synthetic trees that exist within Sothasil's clockwork realm. They stand in metallic soil of the clockwork city and they are essentially just decorative plants as they resemble all kind of regular trees found around Tamriel but they aren't alive because they are just decorations. And then there are the regular trees that glow. Uh, they are exactly what you think. Regular th trees which just glow. Oak trees which for example just have leaves that glow. Uh, they exist on Tamriel and it's unclear to me whether they are the result of magic from mortals or whether they grow as a glowing dream. To be honest, we don't really have lore on it. Now, on the Nightwood trees, uh, we also don't have a lot of lore. Actually, we have very little. Because Nightwood is a material from the Elder Scrolls Online, which, well, we just absolutely have no lore on. Uh, in one of the Lore Masters archives, they basically joked around with the first sighting of Nightwood being when a Khajiit stole some wood at night. But I don't really see that as a very reliable source, to be honest. I think that's more of a joke with the unreliable narrator part. Uh, it's far more likely that Nightwood is just wood from Cold Harbor, so from Molag Ball's Daedric Realm, because it's purple with like a blue glow, just like Cold Harbor. And we can find it there in some cases, but some people have speculated it might be something from Tamriel, which I think is unlikely, but it's worth a mention. Right, and then I promised I'd talk about the histories. Well, I'm planning to do a video on them, or rather a new video, since one of my first ever videos on this channel was on the histories, and that video wasn't too great. Um, so yeah, you could watch that video, but in case you don't want to listen to badly presented lore, or at least worse than now, and a bad microphone, and you also can't wait for the actual remaster of that video. In short, histories are sentient trees which have been around basically ever since the very earliest times on Tamriel, from even before the earliest Elmofe Wars, in which they were just a bystander, and their large forest used to cover all of southern Tamriel. And those forests were largely destroyed during the Eldofe Wars, as they were just an innocent bystander in those wars. They are extremely powerful as a collective, and they communicate with each other across their forests, with their roots. When their forests were largely destroyed by the Eldofe Wars, they used their powers to create the Argonians as their caretakers and protectors. 
to protect the histories against the wars and destructions of mortals. They speak to the Argonians in many ways, from rustling leaves to wind chimes to even giving direct visions, and they can even influence the Argonians' very physique during their birth and lives. Their sap sustains both er, the Argonians' unborn and when they are born, because after their birth they drink his sap in order to shape the Argonians and allow them to connect properly to the hist. Having said that, this by far does not cover everything about the hist. They are simply not just a type of tree. They are far more important than that, and a mention in a list-like video like this would do them just a complete disservice. So, just like my original video did them a complete disservice. So I'll likely make a video on them somewhere later this year. That said, that was all I could say about the mildly interesting, but not too interesting, type of trees around Tamriel. If you enjoyed this video and learned something, be sure to return for the next one, probably next week or the week after, depending on how things go in my life. And now all that rests me is to vocally thank my top Patreon supporters, Mr. Bernardo Binda, Gabriel Binda, Polaris Putin, Athena Hyotis, King Chris, Bulge, Scrap of the Scrolls, Doji, Fenrir, Sword of Bushido, and Mr. Christmas. It's thanks to all these people that and all the others on screen that this channel stays alive and for that I am so very grateful. Even when I'm having a pretty bad cold and uh, honestly I had to do so many retakes of this, I hope, it, I just pray it came out well. I have such a painful throat. I know, I, I, I don't know if you can hear. I hope to see you all next time guys. Uh, I'm gonna edit this stuff. Bye.